Learned Optimism was written by Martin Seligman in 1999. Cultivation of an optimistic mindset significantly increases your chances of health, wealth, and happiness. The traditional view of achievement, like the traditional view of depression, needs overhauling. Our workplaces and our schools operate on the conventional assumption that success results from a combination of talent and desire. When failure occurs, it is because either talent or desire is missing. But failure can also occur when talent and desire are present in abundance, but optimism is missing. Martin Seligman is a cognitive psychologist who spent many years clinically testing the idea of learned helplessness. His experiments giving mild electric shocks to dogs proved that dogs would keep up trying to escape if they believed that. Whatever they did, the shocks would keep coming. Another researcher tested the principle on people using noise instead of shocks and found that learned helplessness can engineered can be engineered in human minds just as easily. Yet the experiments contain, contained an anomaly. As with the dog experiments, one in every three human subjects would not give up. They kept on trying to press the buttons on a panel in an attempt to shut off the noise. What made these subjects different from the others? So Lakeman applied the question to real life. What makes someone pick themselves up after rejection by a lover or another keep going when their life's work becomes to nothing? He found that the ability of some people to bounce back from apparent defeat is not, as we sentimentally like to say, a triumph of the human will. Rather than having an inborn trait of greatnessness, such people have developed a way of explaining events that does not see defeat as permanent or affecting their basic values. Nor is this trait something that we either have or we don't. Optimism involves a set of skills that can be learned. The author undertook groundbreaking work for life insurance company, MetLife. Life insurance is considered one of the most difficult of all sales jobs, a real spirit crusher. The company was spending millions of dollars a year training its agents, only to see most of them move on. Instead of the usual criteria by which MetLife hired, career, background, and so on, Seligman suggested that applicants be hired if they tested well for optimism and explanatory style. The results, agents hired on the basis did 20% better than the regular recruits in the first year and 57 better in the second. They clearly had better ways to deal with the 9 out of 10 rejections that would make the others give up. Optimism and Success Conventional thinking is that success creates optimism. But the evidence laid out by Seligman shows the reverse to be true. On a repeat basis, optimism tends to deliver success, as the experience of the life insurance agents demonstrated at the exact same point that a pessimist will wilt. An optimist perseveres and breaks through an invisible barrier. Not getting through this barrier is often misinterpreted as laziness or lack of talent. So Legman found that people who give up easily never dispute their own interpretation of failure or disparagement. Those who regularly vault the wall listen to their internal dialogue and argue against their own limiting thoughts, quickly finding positive reasons for rejection. Nevertheless, let's not forget that Gates is also a dreamer, per excellence, who at a very young age imagined a world in which every home and office would be using his window software. So Ligman is clear on the point that success in work and life results when we can both perceive present reality accurately and visualize a compelling future. Many people are good at one and not the other. Someone who wishes to learn optimism 
must keep the former skill while becoming a better dreamer. The combination is unbeatable. Most depression results from thinking badly. It is slightly ironic that learned optimism draws much of its data from studies of depression. Before cognitive therapy, depression was always thought of being either anger turned, it, turned in upon itself, fruit, or a chemical malfunction in the brain. However, pioneering cognitive researchers Albert Ellis and Aaron T. Beck see feeling good set out to prove that negative thoughts are not a symptom of depression. They cause it. Most of us know the, this at a common sense level, but psychotherapy allows us to believe that we are dealing with someone beyond our control. Rumination on a problem always connection, connecting it back to some unchangeable aspect of ourselves is a recipe for the blues. Millions of dollars have been spent by America's National Institute of Mental Health to test this idea that depression, i.e. the standard variety, not bipolar or maniac, results from habits of thought. Seligman tells us the results in two words. It does. Moreover, developing the mental muscles of optimism significantly reduces the likelihood that we will be depressed. With the positive explanatory style that Seligman recommends problems as seen as temporary, specific, and external, rather than inevitable expressions of our failure as a person, cognitive therapy changes the basic way a person sees the world, and that altered perception tends to be permanent. The book is therefore not simply about optimism, though it may well turn you into an optimist, but the validity of personal change itself and the dynamic nature of the human condition. So Ligman's latest work, Authentic Happiness, incorporates many of the findings and ideas of learned optimism, but takes the idea of positive psychology further. It is highly recommended.